Uh, buongiorno. Uh, I will start uh, with the one chart explaining what is Ferrari. Um, Ferrari is uh, one company with uh, two souls. One is the racing and one is the, the road cars. Uh, the first Ferrari in 1947 was a racing car and only a uh, few years later we st uh, Ferrari started to manufacture road cars and we kept uh, that way to work racing and uh, road cars always in our more than 60 year story. Um, the two parts of the company, we, we say one company because uh, the two parts are very closely linked and with the matter of this morning, which is simulation, uh, we are taking, taking a lot of uh, methodology from the racing because uh, from the, I do not know if you are aware, but uh, racing the regulation of the racing are asking to reduce as much as possible the test of the car on the track in order to reduce the cost. So more or less everything is done except a uh, few days of test on the road or on the track is done uh, by simulation. So what is for us uh, the virtual prototyping? Everything, all the activities that are supporting or substitute the the uh, physical component in design and testing. Everything uh, of that uh, argument we call virtual prototyping. Also, if it is not only prototyping, but is also testing. In that chart uh, is explained, uh, this is the chart for a normal project of a car, of an automotive company. And uh, these are the, the main issues we are, you are having uh, with the dealing with the, the car development. Uh, cash flow, you are starting to spend money because you are developing the cars, and unless you go on the market, you are only spending, then you are starting to recover, and then uh, uh, you are trying to get back the money you have invested, uh, and of course, at the end, uh, the idea is to gain money. What are the, uh, the critical factors? The complexity of the product asks always for a higher level of uh, expenses in the development. Then uh, when you go on the market, you have the, the competition with the other manufacturers. So everything is in, in the direction to increase the expenses and uh, uh, diffi very difficult situation on the market in order to sell the cars and, and recover the money. Uh, Ferrari is more or less in the same situation uh, with the two more uh, elements. One, uh, Ferrari is uh, well known for the innovation on the product. All our cars, every new cars, every new models has a lot of innovation on the, on, on the, on the car. And that means uh, uh, reducing the time to market, reducing the time that is needed to develop the cars means we are able to put all the innovation are coming uh, from our research department. So the, the idea, you, you know, you cannot develop the research in parallel with development of the cars, otherwise you lose the control of the timing or you lose the control of the cost. But our idea is to get the maximum from the innovation program going on the, as soon as possible on the cars. Second problem specific of us is due to the low volumes, the, the fixed cost, which are the investment and cost for R&D are heavily uh, influencing the result, the economic result of the project. So we are, uh, everything uh, we are doing is try to reduce the time to market in order to get the latest development from the innovation. Second, we are trying to as reduce as much as possible the fixed cost in order to reduce the risk on the, of the project. We started uh, uh, with the working with the uh, simulation or virtual prototyping uh, in the late 19, as was the, the first project was the, a study of the uh, combustion chamber of the F1 engine. But then after the late 80s, everything was moved uh, to simulation and uh, uh, CAD system. Uh, the first uh, F1 car, so the 88, was totally designed uh, on, the, on the car system. <coughs> and with simulation, the first road cars was the, the uh, 456 that was on the market uh, in uh, mid-2090. The, uh, the first application we did uh, with the virtual prototyping was the, the packaging. Uh, you know the big problems on the cars, uh, you want to put 
on inside the cars, more system than the space you have uh, at your disposal. So the, the big activities that has the, the designer or the, uh, the engineer has to find is the how to foot, fit together all the components but keeping the space as low as possible. This is, of course, is very important, especially for this, this post car, where uh, the weight and the dimension are very important for the behavior of the cars. So the first application was uh, mainly related to the layout, uh, looking to the, the mounting and the accessibility, and uh, find out uh, uh, the good tools uh, for having, uh, helping the assembly of the cars. And normally, uh, this is, uh, of course, example. The more important activities is in the engine compartment and the under the dashboard. These are the two parts, uh, the two area of the cars where you have the maximum numbers of components that should be uh, tied, uh, linked together. Then the second application was uh, CFD. Uh, in, uh, on our cars, the aerodynamics is very important. So we decided uh, uh, by first, of course, we, we started to work, test the cars on the road. Then we moved to the wind tunnel. And then we decided to move to simulation in order to get as much as possible numbers of tests done in a short term. This is uh, an application we did uh, on the underneath of the cars. Uh, of course, in that case, the objective is to have drag forces. The, the sports cars, of course, are taking care of the, of, the, of the drag, but then the second is to how to have down forces on the cars in order to maximize the performances at the high speed, medium high speed. If you look at the, the, the differences uh, of a car of 94 and 99, as the, the color moves dark, means uh, we are having a higher level of downforces. This is uh, five years uh, when we started 94, and then uh, what was the result five years later. And this is uh, another uh, example of application. Uh, you know, the, the stylist of, uh, of Ferrari was always Pininfarina, and with them we decided uh, uh, they have uh, five phase of the cars to work on in order to get the stylus. And uh, the engineer has the sixth, uh, sixth phase, which is the underneath of the cars in order to get the performances. Uh, this is uh, one of the applications we did. Uh, when you normally go on the wind tunnels to understand how is going the flows, you are using a smoke uh, just to see, visualize how is moving the flow of the air. Uh, the result of uh, our uh, testing was to move everything by simulation, so we are able to get the same result you are having on the, on the wind tunnels, on the screen uh, of, uh, of, the, of the engineer. And this is the, the, the uh, test, simulating test we are doing in order to get uh, to understand if everything is going the proper way. If you don't find uh, that the flow detached from the cars means the, the car is going well from the aerodynamics point of view, if the, the, the flows detect detached, well, means uh, the, the, uh, the design is not a good one. So everything, this is a, a simulation. You can do the same in order to get uh, it to understand if you have the good uh, um, uh, cooling of the system. And this is another way to use the, the CFD, is to uh, look if you are filling in the proper way the, the tank. Th this, of course, is not for uh, normal cars, because in that case, uh, the time needed to f uh, refuel is not important. But this is very important when uh, you, you use uh, for the race cars, where the, the pit stop in refueling is very important to the result at the end of the, of the race. So having that system that works in a proper way, reducing from one, two, three seconds the, the time that you can stay, it's uh, easy, uh, give us a possibility to uh, win. What you saw as an example was to look how the, the, is the feeling of the, of the tank. And the other way is uh, the, the tank is, uh, is very complicated. It's not only a tank, there is inside there are different pumps that move the gasoline inside the, the the tank and the, the, the way to uh, reduce the time in filling is to reduce the, the counter pressure, but at the same time works how, how they are working the pump inside the, uh, the tank. Another activity is we have moved uh, from the road to the wind tunnel and then to the simulation is to the airflow on the cockpit. Uh, 
the objective, of course, is to have around the drivers for the passenger no speed, because otherwise you are disturbed. So the, the, what you have to find out is uh, how to define the aerodynamics of the, of the, of the, uh, over the higher part of the cars in order to reduce as much as possible the flows inside uh, the uh, compartment. In the past, this was done on the road, and then you imagine how it was difficult. Now, everything is done by simulation, so you have a lot of possibility to make a higher number of, of tests. But uh, the important thing is that you look into the visualization, you can understand how you are modifying the situation. And so you are going by try and error uh, to, to define a situation which is the good one. The same, this is another matter. This, of course, is safety, is not the, the aerodynamics. And this is the way is to make the simulation uh, in order to reduce as much as possible the number of tests you have to do with the, with the real cars. The, normally, the, the methodology is to uh, check the models on uh, existing cars and then make the forecast of what should be the performances on the system on the new one. This is the, the way to reduce as much as possible the timing and the cost of the prototype. This is more or less the same, uh, but in that case, the important thing is to check if the roll bar, the active roll bar that are placed behind uh, the seats are working in the proper way in order to protect the passenger when the car roll over. This is something that, of course, on our car do not exist, but by the, the regulation, you, have, uh, you must perform that kind of test. And then uh, we are moving uh, to the activities that now is very, very important. Uh, the simulation of the dynamics performances of the cars. Uh, when, uh, as I mentioned, we started in the late 90s with the packaging, now is, uh, everything is concentrated in uh, working on the simulate the performance, the behavior of the, of the cars by the models when it's running on the cars in order to get the best performances. Of course, of course for us, performance is, is the key uh, element of our ma car. So we have to develop el all the technology and the methodology in order to get that result done by the simulation and not uh, moving on the road. This is uh, uh, a simulation of, uh, I do not go in detail because I don't think this is interesting, but uh, the different curves are how is affected the performances, uh, and the performance in that case is understeer. Uh, the performance on the car due to the different uh, systems that you can, uh, you can modify. Tires, uh, aerodynamics, and uh, weight of the cars. Lo working on that items, you can see what is the, uh, the results on the cars. And of course, the, the objective is to get the best in terms of acceleration. That means the car is moving very fast on the, on the, on the corner. But second, you have to have uh, a curve that is uh, as smooth as possible, that means you are able to manage the car. This is the, the way to, to understand how is the set up the cars, and this is a simulation of the, of the track, of the, how the car is performing on the track. Uh, this is the, the red and the blue uh, curve are two different setups of the cars, and you can understand if, if the, which is the, the best setting of the cars. You can do uh, that kind of simulation on the uh, dynamics of the cars, or you can do looking the, uh, for the definition of the gear ratio. Or uh, you can simulate what is uh, happening on the cars working with the uh, different systems that are under control from the, the software and the electronics. This is the, how you can look how it's doing the cars with the uh, electronic differential control and of course, one which is on the left is without the electronic control, and the on the right is uh, the same cars with the uh, electronic control of the differential. This is uh, another way to use a simulation. Uh, the red curves is, uh, is the, the car driven by a driver, by a, a pilot, and the uh, blue curve is what is uh, uh, the best performance of that car if driven in a proper way. So you can use that uh, test 
on which you compare what is doing the drivers on the track and what you simulate uh, with the, 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 the models of the cars to understanding if the driver is performing in the proper way or if not, what the reason, because you know drivers are, are managed by the sensation they have on the cars. So the, the important thing in that case is to use the correlation or looking the, the telemetry and the simulation to understand what are the characteristics of the car that are not well understood by the driver. Uh, if you look, this is a, uh, the first part is a braking, heavy braking at, the high, perf at high speed, more or less 300 uh, kilometers per hour. And uh, if you see the black, the blue curve is what the car is able to do. Uh, but the red curve is what the driver is, is able to do on that car. So that means he has something that uh, do not completely works. And so understanding or looking what are the, the different characteristics of the cars that should affect the performances uh, of the cars with the drivers, you can try to understand what is not working in the proper way, means how is, uh, who is not uh, completely understood by the drivers. So it should be a case of uh, distribution of the braking force between the front and the rear. That means when the driver push on the brake pedals, he feels the car that is not stable, he releases the, the, the pedals or it should be the differences on, uh, on the slip on the front and rear tires, or should be the uh, instability of the cars. Simulating what is uh, the, the, uh, the effect of that uh, drivers on the cars, you can understand what is the, the real or more important uh, effect that the driver is not able to control or feel on the cars. And so you can understand and fit the cars, set the cars, in the proper way for the driver. So this is uh, very important to understand what is saying to you the driver. It is not normally so easy because they, they, at the end of the day they are men, so they, but they are not engineers. So in that way you couple the, the people that drives that is normally a very good people, but is not a technician with the capability of the technician that should understand what is doing the car. Okay, this is uh, what you can do uh, in terms of simulation. Of course you can uh, look what is the performances uh, on the very low mu of the cars, when, when you want to look the performance on the car on the low mu. This is uh, the starting, the simulation of the starting. And this is a more complex simulation, uh, not looking at the simple maneuver, but looking what is performing the cars on in a predefined uh, uh, way. This is the, the, the simulation we did in order to check how is working the 4x4 on our latest model. And if you see the, uh, the red and the blue car, uh, curve, the, the blue is the two wheel drives and the, and the red is the four wheel drives. To, so you, you understand, look at the diagram, where it is really working the 4x4. That is uh, when you are accelerating out of the, of the band. And this is uh, uh, our latest development. Uh, in, on our cars, more or less, all the mechanical systems are under the control of the, uh, of the ECU. That means electronics and software are controlling the mechanical system. The problem is uh, we have uh, a lot of system and we have to have all the system working together. And then, of course, the, 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 uh, the best results if you are able to integrate during the development the way all the systems are performing. Otherwise, if you are moving from defining and uh, uh, getting the best result for each system, then you are not able to get the, go the overall result in the proper way. So it, you have to be able to work with all the systems together and uh, taking the best result, coupling the different systems. If you look at the numbers of the, the electronic controls we have on the cars, now the, the problem is that you cannot do that on the test, you have to do by simulation. And then this is the only way to get the best result coupling together the different control of the cars. And this is a, again as, an, as another example, what we did yesterday and what we are doing today. Uh, if you try to optimize every subsystem, you have to perform a high level of, of test. And then of course uh, you are moving in, uh, with an approach which is a try by error and, and error. And then 
ask for a lot of time, but the second effect, you are not able, you are not sure you have bet, get the best results in absolute. And of course, with our car, we are looking for the best. So the, with the vir virtual development, we are reducing the numbers of tests we have to do, number of uh, setup of, of component, but then we are able to get uh, to test or to simulate uh, uh, extreme solution that normally you don't expect to, to think or to have uh, when you are only working by testing experimentation and to get the best results. And this is the, uh, what we are trying to do and this is the activities of that days. Uh, if, you, uh, if you saw everything I have presented now is uh, open loop. So the car is modeled by itself and then uh, we are trying to understand uh, by uh, a normal driver what are the performance on the cars. Now the, the problems we, we or no, not the problem, but the, our business is uh, not to prepare cars for uh, very good drivers. Uh, we have uh, to have uh, people that are uh, good in driving and not good in driving. So the, the spread of the performance of the driver are very important. So it's difficult to understand how or to imagine how the performance of the car fit with the different characteristics of the driver. So we, uh, of course, is uh, easier with the racing because we have a professional driver. So you understand or you know how is performing the driver, uh, which is not where you are selling cars to, over, uh, to anyone on the market. So what we are trying to understand now is to close the loop and uh, try to not only to simulate the performance of the cars, but coupled with different typology of driver. That means the future is uh, to put the simulator, uh, or the driver inside the loop in order to check what is the performances of uh, the overall system, cars plus driver. This is another example of utilization of the virtual prototyping is the uh, how to look uh, the rendering uh, just to understand you know the, the, the problem today we, we are putting at disposition of the driver a lot of information so the important thing is to check if the information you are giving to him they are understandable and are easy to be uh, understood and uh, not to distract the driver. This is the overall information we are giving to, uh, to the drivers of our 458 cars, which is our sports car, uh, they, they have uh, information about uh, uh, how it's going uh, around the environment, but is th they have also information how it's performing the cars. If the car is ready, is cold, or uh, the, there is something wrong on the cars. Everything is uh, uh, positioned on the, the dashboard and he has everything under control without lo losing uh, attention to the, to the road. And now uh, we are preparing something that will uh, complicate everything because now we are adding a new system which is the, the, ele the electric or the electronic motors to the cars because of the regulation. You know the, the, the uh, automotive business is under pressure because this the emission and uh, everyone has to find out a way to reduce the emission. Uh, one of the solutions, of course, is to couple the normal engine with the electric one. So now you have uh, another system that is put inside the cars. So that means higher level of complexity of the product. Yeah, the packaging is becoming more and more complex. But then you have to find uh, the right way to couple the electric engine and the uh, thermal engine. This is uh, uh, what was done uh, two years ago with the curse on the F1 that was uh, helping uh, the driving of the cars, especially in overtaking with the, the, electronic en the electric engine. And uh, the now is, uh, uh, is under uh, evaluation the way you can use the electric engine in order to increase the performances of the, of the overall cars. That means another system that is added to the already uh, different system that are giving the performance on the car. This is the simulation uh, of the, of the uh, hybrid cars. Uh, it's not important to go in details, but uh, then if you see the, the, what are the, the vehicle speed uh, and the acceleration, that means the two performance, the two cars are more or less equivalent in terms of performances, but you are gaining a lot in terms of CO2 and CO2 emission. This, of course, is the, the way we are developing the cars. 
Okay, so try to uh, conclude in, in terms of uh, objective uh, reached by the utilization of the simulation in a different field of the automotive development. This was uh, what we got ten, 10 years ago. This is uh, where we are today. Uh, we were able to uh, stretch the, the development of the, of the cars, gaining uh, more or less one year and a half in development. That means, if you remember, the fact that uh, uh, we want to reduce the time to market in order to get the latest innovation on the cars, that means we can wait results from our research uh, activities one year more. That is, uh, of course, it's a lot. And then, of course, normally uh, the correlation between time and, uh, and, and money uh, is a direct correlation. So if you reduce the time, normally you, get you reduce the, the expenses. And this is the effect uh, that we found out in terms of uh, uh, resources. Uh, if we go back in the year, uh, you see the, the different uh, uh, number, of, uh, the percentage of people we have inside the company in terms of uh, school uh, teaching, uh, primary, secondary, university. Uh, you, you remember I mentioned that the uh, simulation was mainly started heavily in around the, the end of 90, 2000. This was the results in terms of uh, uh, skill of the people needed in order to manage the uh, development of the cars with that uh, technology or methodology. Uh, we have increased a lot uh, the people coming from university because of course to manage that kind of, uh, of uh, uh, methodology you have to have skilled people. This is what, what we got. And this is again how, is, uh, how we, we are moving inside the different methodology I mentioned it before. This is uh, the normal S-curve of the technology you can, uh, you can utilize and develop. The second, uh, the second phase where you are using the methodology in order to get better performance. The third one where more development is not needed. Uh, you are only work to uh, use the methodology in order to increase the efficiency of the system, but not the performances. In the early 80s, end of, uh, end of 80s, early 90s, we were working with packaging and was the uh, innovation phase where we try to understand what we can get back from the methodology. If we go to the 90s, uh, packaging is something that we use in order to get better performances and we started to work on the vehicle dynamics and this is uh, where we are today. Uh, packaging is always, uh, it's a methodology that we are using only to, to get more efficiency. That means reducing time in uh, finding the solution. The uh, vehicle dynamics is uh, the, this, the uh, uh, simulation that we are using in order to increase the performances of the cars. And uh, we have started uh, to work with the human machine interface in order to close, to close the loop. And this is uh, the uh, closing the loop is uh, what we are using from two years on the, on the F1 department. The, the red uh, figures you see inside is the car, where is the, the driver is seated, and then of course the system is able to give it to you the sensation of what is doing the cars under the control during the track. The maximum displacement of the cabin is uh, four meters, so he can, you can uh, re simulate really what is doing the cars with the, uh, if you want the fast driving maneuver you get on the F1. This is not Toyota as we sp spoke before, is having the same uh, in a room which is uh, 200 meters, so he's able to look to the cars, what is doing the cars on the rear road for the low speed maneuver, but on the F1, or the sports cars, you don't need uh, to understand that because normally it's easy done. You have to understand how it's do performing the car in a very sharp and very short maneuver. And this is uh, what we, uh, we did two years ago. And uh, we are working a lot on that. Now is uh, uh, on the F1 and we started with the road cars. But as, uh, as the time goes on, 
uh, we are taking that kind of simulation inside our development plan. Uh, if you want, the, the strange thing is uh, uh, for the F1, that was done in order to reduce the cost. Uh, that system cost three millions of euro. So that means you are reducing the cost, but <laughs> you are spending a lot of money in terms of investment. But anyway, it works. Uh, because today you are able to uh, teach the drivers with that system, not going on the, on the test on the track. You, you are simulating how it's performing on the cars, and you, then you can changing the setup of the cars, understanding how it's performing the driver. So you, you can do everything without going uh, really on the track. And this is really important because you can understand in a very short way and then simulating a lot of uh, modification to understand what is the, the good one for the driver. Because the problem is to get the cars which is performing in the proper way in the hand of the driver. OK, finally, where, wh what is our commitment today? Uh, simulation, virtual prototyping, virtual testing is something that is uh, for us is mandatory. We cannot go back. This is the way we have to continue. And uh, uh, of course, this is uh, has a real effect on the, the, the people. Uh, you, you have to have always sm more skilled people and the, the time of obsolescence of the people is reducing. So you have to put, if you want to work with that kind of uh, uh, methodology, you have to put aside a way to learn and teach the people and getting them uh, learned every time with the new methodology. So this is the, the big effort. It's not only entering, but it's continuing to have the right people prepared for the activity they have to perform. And the, the evolution of the methodology is so, so high, so quick, that you have to continue to learn, to learn the people. But of course, uh, and this is the, uh, because uh, uh, we, we in Ferrari say the, the best car, you can have the best car if you have the, the right uh, environment, uh, the right uh, uh, tooling, but then you need the, the right people. So at the end of the day, the important thing, you can have good result of, the, of that methodology if you have the right people. That means you have skilled people uh, with the enthusiasm needed in order to perform the activities. OK, this is the final phrases. Is, uh, uh, the, the activity is going more and more in difficulties, but probably you have, get, uh, you have uh, more chances than me to have good success in the activities. Thank you. <laughs>